right, and at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and reinstall the main nut. You'll see why in a second. So in order to do that, I like to put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads, just a very little bit. Even that's a bit much. Just run it around. Make sure we get every bit off the end. should be good for now. Worry about exactly where to put that when it comes time to zero the mic out. But the reason I put that in and the reason I haven't masked this off yet is because that's where I suspend it from. Got a little bit of stainless steel wire. Wrap it in this little gap. the twisted part do a little gap there and then I usually put the, the tail down so I don't jab myself with it which that's the voice of experience talking wire up for now. All right, I'm ready for paint. Okay, back from paint. Um, this is the stuff I use, by the way. Um, I tried a couple other things. This seems to hold up the best. Uh, it might not hold up in a you know real world industrial environment, but uh, for my home shop, it's perfectly fine. Uh, I use the semi gloss black. Uh, but now that it's all painted up, it's time for the satisfying part of this. So. Find the end of the tape. Off. 
And that didn't come out half bad. Oh, right. Now we're ready for assembly. So I've already got the adjusting nut in. So take, oh, I guess before I get into all of this, whoops. So on the, I guess the subject of oil. Um, I've seen people say use no oil at all. Um, I'm not inclined to do that. Uh, I do have this stuff, which obviously was what Starrett recommends, but I actually find if you don't use the micrometer for a week or two, it will actually bind, like it'll stick. I mean, once you free it, it's fine and it operates just fine, but I just don't like that. And I've actually had really good luck using this uh, Marvel Air Tool Oil. I mean, it doesn't take much, just couple drops. I'll thread on the compensator nut and drop on the spring. Okay. That little line right there. And there's a corresponding line on the compens or the compensating nut. So I want to line those up as I thread this together. I usually like to put a little. Just let that run back and forth a couple times. Excess. And we will see how much adjustment needs to be made. Hmm, it's pretty close. Just a couple thou out. Exactly. So, um, let me grab a couple of things and I'll to, just to show you exactly how these adjust in a more clear fashion than just watching me do it here. Um, and I'll be right back. So this is the assembled version of what's inside the micrometer here. Uh, well, back here. But, uh, so the way that this works, you have your adjusting nut, you have your tension spring, and then you have your compensator nut. It all fits together. And the marks I just showed when I put the micrometer together, they matter. 
because that's how these two pieces were threaded together. That's the mark that I guess whoever at the factory put on there to show that that's... This was the orientation of the serrations when they threaded them together. So that what that matters for is thread wear. So as these things get older and you get used more, uh, the threads are going to wear and you'll actually end up with uh, a little bit of backlash, which is just lateral movement. I mean, I can feel a little bit there, but I doubt you can see it on the camera. But the way that these compensate for that is uh, all you do is you move one serration and it'll tighten the thread up because it misaligns them just a little bit. And the advantage that, that has, like, see, I can't even thread this together. I mean, I could force it, but I can't thread this together now. And the advantage that that has is that as the threads wear, I mean, you can just keep moving this around as they wear more and more. Obviously, this one hasn't worn really at all because, like I said, I can't move. I mean, maybe if I go back one, it'll thread together. Nope, doesn't want to thread together. It will, like I said, if I force it, it will, but it doesn't really want to. It only wants to go together there. When you misalign the threads, it essentially tightens them. And the, good, the nice thing about that is uh, it actually spreads the wear over the entire length of that internal thread, instead of just on a couple of threads at the end. So it, again, that's to prolong the life of the tool. Um, as far as backlash is concerned, even, you know, even with it, put together with the marks in alignment, there's there's always going to be some backlash. I mean, there has to be space within the threads, otherwise they wouldn't be able to move. And that's, uh, that's what the spring is for. It pushes the two nuts apart and puts tension on the threads so that no matter, and it does it in both directions equally, so that no matter which way you move it, there's always going to be threads engaged on one side or the other. So that's how it compensates for wear. Now for calibrating and adjusting it, that's where this thread comes in. So you can see this is an entire assembly that goes into the micrometer. So as you know, with this, it was two thou short of zero. So that means it needs to rotate farther. And as the as you rotate the thimble and the spindle extends that way. So it needs to extend farther. So you back the compensating nut out of the barrel and it moves the whole assembly out so that that would allow more room for this to turn and extend outward. And if it was, if it actually had gone too far, you would do the opposite. You would tighten the adjusting nut into the barrel and it wouldn't, it wouldn't let the spindle extend as far. So I'll show you how that's done here in just a second. But one of the main advantages and one of the reasons that uh, restoring these micrometers is nice, especially if you have a few of them like I do, um, is all of these parts are replaceable. You know, I've got a, a couple of micrometers that have come to me as then just turned out to be junk or honestly ones that I've messed up in the past but these parts are still good and I'm able to replace you know if the compensating nut or the spring are missing from one that I get I have spares to replace them with and also um, here's a, a zero to one that I pulled apart uh, this bushing here is also replaceable if it starts to uh like, I don't know if this one, let's see. Yeah, you see there's a little bit of wiggle. And that bushing is worn out. 
I can actually pull that out and replace it. And even the, uh, the anvils are replaceable. Although you'd actually, well, you either have to find a way to clamp it and pull it or drill a hole through the back and knock it through. But every part of these is replaceable. And that's yet another, uh, was there, their, uh, the motto was the longest lived micrometer that can be bought. And those are some of the reasons why. So anyway, let me put this back together so I don't lose the pieces. So now on to this one. So as we know, it was about 2,000 shy of zero. So actually, go ahead and back this out. So based on what we know, if the spindle isn't able to extend far enough, we need to give it more room, which means we need to back this compensating nut out. So, hang on a second. And that should be enough. Or it should be close anyway. Getting there. Also like to clean off the faces of the anvils too to make sure that there's nothing on them. Just use a piece of paper lightly squeezed between the faces and just pull it out. And we went too far. So I'll go ahead and speed up through all of this. And there it is. Zero. So, the only other thing that I would like to be able to do that would make me consider this thing good as or better than new is if I was able to lap the faces. Uh, basically, you take a parallel piece of metal with... Uh, some kind of lapping compound on it and you put it between the faces and you wiggle it and you move it around, slide between the two. Uh, Tom Lipton at Oxtools has a really good video on how to, on doing that. I'll put a link in the bottom. But, I mean, as is, these, this is plenty good for my shop. So, I'll consider that another successful restoration. Another good usable piece of equipment added to my collection. Um, if you're curious to see the rest of the collection, uh, let me know. Um, uh, either way, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, foray into some of the background work involved in my shop. Uh, thanks for stopping by, and I will see you on the next project.